Christmas has come early, as my boy Alex has come to help me out with the three-round mock. Hello, Alex. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. I'm excited. Stoked. I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready to get into this, but what's crack a -lackin'? It's your boy, Bro Schmo, just in case you do not know. So go ahead, become a bro and subscribe. Leave this video a thumbs up. If you enjoy the content, as always, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Let's have that nice, beautiful, sensual football discourse. Alex, where can we find you? Hail Mary Sports, baby. You guys yeah. know it. Same if you guys like this type of content. I make mock drafts too. I actually make two a week. One without trades, one with trades. So if you guys like mock draft content, usually Brochmo and I are very similar. So that's right. It's like a copycat well. channel. Oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> oh, don't even start with that. Don't even start yeah. with that. <laughs> hey, for the people who do want to join a fan mock draft, you can join my Discord and then we can have a lot of fun there. Ooh. And we have tape studies over there. You can join too, Brochmo. I, I am about to start doing walk the mock pretty soon. I was gonna wait till after the holidays. Dude, um, my my mods have been doing some good stuff over there. Yeah, in the Discord. We've been trying to build like a super special edition, but oh, it's that's fun nice. stuff. That's nice. Well, Let's kick into this. Anywho, yeah, when it comes to this draft order, we're just going to be alternating picks. This is the current draft order, three rounds, and uh, I have elected to go first for reasons we'll get to later. And uh, I got the Houston Texans. There's only one pick here buddy and it's mm -hmm. bryce young get your quarterback of the future if someone's telling you otherwise they're just wrong doesn't mean that they're gonna get a bad pick in like a will anderson or jalen carter it's just the wrong pick yeah that's fair i it's just the best value pick plus even if the texans wanted to trade down who's gonna pay the price to go up they're just there's not a quarterback needy team within two spots so it's just a little bit too expensive. But number two for the Bears, Jalen Carter is one of those unicorn players. He's going to be that Aaron Donald-esque type. When you get those, yeah, the unicorn. Unicorn. <laughs> um, when you get to have somebody who's like really that special that you can't get every year, sometimes you just can't pass on it. Will Anderson's an absolute stud, but at the end of the day, this is a really deep edge class. Not so much defensive interior, and Jalen Carter really is that special compared to the next best guy. Yep, basically with the Seattle Seahawks pick here, I was going to take who you did not select, and you did not yep. take Will Anderson. Therefore, I'm taking Will Anderson. As simple as that. Now go ahead. Do the Detroit pick, because this is what I yep. want to avoid, because I'm not <laughs> saying y'all Lion fans are wrong. I'm not saying y'all are annoying, but... I just don't so you're saying they're, I don't they're annoying do, I don't want to do it in the comment section anymore. <laughs> it's as simple okay. as we disagree, and I don't want to do it. <laughs> so I'm not on team quarterback for the Lions. I'm on team build this team up until you can drop somebody in and then to make a big difference. I'm also not a huge fan of this quarterback class, so I don't think that you're really going to elevate the game the way you could with, let's just say, a Caleb Williams on the board or a Drake May. So... With that being said, there are no trades in this, right? Like, I guess we should clarify that there are no trades. Goodness. Otherwise, people are going to be like, why didn't you trade? No trades. Um, the best value here, he's one of my favorite players in the draft. I know that you have a couple key positions that you need to hone in on. I think edge rusher definitely is something that I do want to address, but it's something you can address later on. I think that the corner class has a few specific studs in them that don't fully that are not able to translate down the board. You're not able to get those guys down the board. So Joey Porter Jr., he is an absolute freak. He has unbelievable measurables, and he's an amazing player against the run, too. The best field awareness I've ever seen from a defensive back. I was Mr. Sauce Gardner, number one player in the draft. I love these corners that look truly unique, truly special, almost as much as I love Gojo. But... I mean, Joey Porter, really special. You need to get that DB down. You really do need to get one of those guys in there. Joey Porter, he's nasty. He's going to be great no matter what defense you run. So instant impact, number four. Very nice. Arizona Cardinals. Uh, for me, I'm thinking pass rush. I'm thinking corner. I'm thinking offensive line because outside of DJ Humphreys, I think their whole offensive line for the most part is a free agent. So really, at those three positions, I'm going with the top guy on my board. That guy happens to be Miles Murphy. Absolutely love the physical tools, the imposing mm -hmm. will of Miles Murphy. 
the other guy's a beast. He's super consistent too, which it's kind of nice to get some consistency there. Uh, number six, the Colts are looking for a new commander at the helm. Obviously, the past two free agents haven't exactly worked out. So, you know, if as long as you can find some way to sure up that left tackle spot, whether Bernard Ryman can actually develop into that, like maybe just get a new offensive line coach to be able to coach these guys properly because I think the talent is there. Oh, they got Jeff um, Saturday. Huh? I, they, they can get Jeff Saturday to be the O-line coach. I mean, you have options. If you can do that properly, I think someone like C.J. Stroud can be a very good distributor of the ball. I'm not as high on him as many people in this class, including Broshmo here. Um, but I do understand that with the correct protection package, with the correct play design, they do have the talent at wide receiver as well to be able to have a good fit for CJ. They also have the running back as well. Not this year, but for when CJ plays. So um, sorry to hit that fantasy note with you, Broshmo. Yeah, man. RIP it's... Jonathan Taylor. I know, right? Uh, I was feeling good going into the playoffs, but... Uh... Yeah, now I got to rely on Kenneth Walker, maybe Jeff Wilson, <laughs> Chubba Hubbard. I play in a 14 team league. So it's like, this that's is a pretty, a, good. it's a deep league. Yeah. Yeah. That's, oh. that's too shabby. Yeah. Atlanta Falcons. Uh, oh, man. Uh, I did think about quarterback here. Uh, but you know what? I want to see a lot more from Desmond Ritter. We got a couple of more games. Well, what, three more games to end the year? So. Uh, I you can reel back on that that thought that idea for now. Uh, I would have loved a pass rusher, which you still could. Like we were talking about, like uh, Jared Verse versus like Tyree mm-hmm. Wilson. But for me, ultimately, just going best player on the board. I still lean Brian Bre- uh, Breezy, and uh, just get that interior pressure with Grady Jared. Just just draft draft good players. Might also return apparently, so we'll see. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, that that's the funny part. So uh, what we were talking about before this was like, would Brian Breezy even consider returning if he knew he's going to be a top 10 prospect? That's why, like, personally, I kick him down my board. I'm not very high on him, but I do understand that a majority of the consensus is has a freaky build, has some really unique pass rush moves. So I do understand where people can love him. But yeah, definitely something to watch if he's already considering to return because there's no reason to if you actually have a guaranteed shot at the top 10. Yeah, tell that to Olufashanu. 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 He's a lock top 50 at least. He He was a lock probably top 15. Maybe. We we don't know what the NFL thinks though, to be fair. We don't know what the NFL thinks. Uh, Dane Brugler Um, had him top top 10. I think he had him five or six. He's a beast, but... CJ Stroud was already taken at number six, and that would be my dream pick for the Panthers. I love Matt Corral. He was my high school quarterback at Oaks Christian. Yes, I know he transferred to Pauly. Don't at me. But um, I'm pretty sure that Tepper's just going to want something that's not a pair of, like, he's not a sloppy second. And Will Levis, honestly, you really do need to watch the tape, especially versus Georgia. Um, He really plays a lot better than what the statistics say. And under pressure, he is far better than what C.J. Stroud puts out. If you look at the numbers, we're talking about numbers here, and you say Will Levis looks bad. Look at him under pressure. That's much more translatable to the NFL. There's a lot more pressure there than there was at Ohio State, and it's probably equal to the way it was at Kentucky. So I like the translatable reps. You can see similar similar plays, similar reps to what you'll see at the next level. And I think that he's actually going to command this team a lot better than what a lot of people think. Matt is smaller, has a smaller arm, has more injury concerns, and maybe is not always the best leader in the world. And I love him to death, but sometimes Matt can get in his head. Not so much with Will, somebody who looks like he's willing to put his life on the line for the team. Very nice. So I got the got Philadelphia. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I got uh, the Philadelphia Eagles via the New Orleans Saints, and with this pick. There was, there was stuff to consider. No Brian Brazi. He's typically my favorite pick for the Eagles. Uh, I thought about... I'm not talking about the Chiefs, Gojo. Gosh. Uh, the but, goat. Uh, yeah, the goat. Uh, but uh lost my train of thought. Jared Verse I thought about, but I think he would be a similar role to Hassan Haskins. And, ult- yeah, ultimately I was like, go ahead and get your... Get your corner. You, you get the top pick of whatever corner you want. I've said this in the past. Uh, I think 
Christian Gonzalez is the best scheme fit in terms of what they've done this year, being a bit more man heavy. So I'm going with Christian Gonzalez. Just for clarification, people probably heard you say Hassan Haskins, but Hassan Reddick. Did I say Haskins? Yeah. yeah no, I'll trash <laughs> Hassan Haskins later on. Yeah, don't worry. Um, Reddick, my so, bad. My bad. Yes. Yeah. At number 10, I was actually going to take whichever corner was left over from Christian Gonzalez and Keely Ringo. I think that the Raiders need help a lot all over the defense. It's a little too high for Trenton Simpson, So, and there's no defensive interior. So personally, I think Keely Ringo, through that athleticism and through his field awareness, probably going to be the best value. Very nice. Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, well, corners start flying off the board, and I was like, oh, man, you know what? Might just send it here. Three straight corners. But I'm not in love with their offensive line. The guard play is not that good. Um, though, I mean, Brandon Sheriff, he's been a little beat up this year, and you're kind of hoping yeah. he'll play better off on that contract. Uh, yeah. But mainly, I look at the tackles. Jawan Taylor, going to be a free agent. I'm not, I've never been wild about Cam Robinson. He's very middle of the road, middle of the pack. Yeah. So if you feel great about Walker Little, I have no idea. We haven't seen him much. So like, okay, cool. He could be your right tackle. Let's go ahead and maybe look for someone to replace Cam Robinson that could start early and that could even, like, honestly, Walker Little or who I'm going to select right here, Paris Johnson, could start at the guard position if you really feel like you don't want to start either either of those guys at tackle. I don't know. But Par- I think just getting a better offensive line will help Trevor Lawrence. And you know what? Who else will help? Trevor Lawrence's good friend, uh, ATN. So. It's true. Well, for me, I saw that Quentin Johnston was here for the Texans. <laughs> so Could not made, pass him so up. So I made the easy pick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I had the pick fall right into my lap. Obviously, I think that he has a true X build. We don't even know if Brandon Cooks is going to be there in the first place after all the drama. But obviously, him on the boundary with John Mechie in the slot, Nico Collins or Brandon Cooks there as well. You can never be disappointed with that. It's an amazing group. And it really is giving Bryce Young as good of an option as possible. Um, to be able to succeed. Yeah, and I just remembered that uh, when I was talking about that Eagles pick, uh, mm-hmm. I was like, you get your pick of the top corner on the board. I totally forgot, totally blanked that uh, Joey Porn went uh, <laughs> went that high. So, well, yeah. Whoops. Uh, anywho, yeah. Uh, Pittsburgh Steelers, no Joey Porter available. Oh, man. I think he would be a really good fit. Uh, but we're going to go offensive line. Peter Skaronsky, is he a guard? Is he a tackle? Well, you know what? I think he could play all five positions on the offensive line and he is a very technically sound player he is uh he plays with great strength and guess mm-hmm. what this team needs some good run blocking because naji is having a hard time eating this year so let's get skaronsky well, take this doesn't matter if he plays guard or tackle because the steelers need kind of both so it'll be okay um, but the Packers. So I watched this guy last night with my guys on Discord. So again, feel free to join that too. Would love for you guys to be able to hang out. Um, but the Packers run defense. Hmm. Um, you are pretty much half the year without Rashawn Gary. This team, you cannot disagree with the fact that one, they're not going to take offensive players in the first round. It's a pain, but you know it is what it is. They like super raw, super high upside, really good run defending off the bat defensive players. And Tyree Wilson is literally the definition of that. 6'6", 275, hyper raw, but he shows so much potential. He literally is everything what you'd want from a Packers. Like, he's everything that Packers literally look for. So definitely something that I think you just need to send in, just forget about it, and look for round two to be able to get some offensive players. I like it. I like it. I like it. All right. Seattle kind of had a tough pick here uh, because there was a variety of guys that I would have loved for this pick who are now off the board. Ultimately, I ended up settling with Trenton Simpson. Uh, dude's just a fantastic player. Yeah. Great out in space. Uh, ideal blitzer, whether it's from the edge or if he's shooting through the B or the A gaps. Uh, and it kind of gives you – he's a – I think he would be a good partner in crime to Jordan mm-hmm. Brooks? Brooks. Brooks, okay. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, no, I like that pick. The Patriots, Isaiah wins on his way out. So what better way to replace a Georgia tackle than the Georgia tackle, Broderick Jones? No need to say much more about it. Yeah, no, I, I actually I actually really like that pick because that was going to be my pick for the Jets. 
Uh, mm. Instead, I'm going to go with an old faithful pick of mine. Uh, I think uh, you get Brian Branch to there and there to replace LaMarcus Joyner, a guy that can fill multiple roles. Very, one of the best run defenders, period, regardless of position in this class. I think he's only missed one tackle his whole career. So give me Brian Branch. I love Brian Branch. That guy's a freak. Um, so 18 with the Lions. We missed out on Miles Murphy before. So I promised y'all I'd try to go after an edge rusher later. Jared Verse fell right into our lap. I seriously think it would not be a huge surprise to me if this guy ends up being the best player in the class. Genuinely, when he's healthy, this guy is an absolute freak. He can take over a game. So um, big fan of Jared Verse. Golly, dude. I do love me Verse, man. I'm so my glad dream I top. It's, that's my dream first two picks, given like their position right now. Yeah. I love it. All right. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, this one kind of easy for me, just given the state of their cornerbacks currently, as uh, they have Carlton Davis, uh, but Jamil Dean, Sean Murphy Button, both going to be free agents. Not sure if they're going to be able to sign uh, one of those guys back, let alone two. So I'm going to go with Cam Smith. Very good corner. Uh, yeah. I mean, I feel like he gets lost between everyone talking about Porter, Gonzalez, and um, Ringo. But I think he's right up there. Yeah. He's the unsung hero. Um, 20 for the Titans. So you're pretty much, to me, it was down to offensive line and Jordan Addison here because Jordan Addison's just that good. But the identity is through the run game. You can't really see many good quarterbacks who are able to play well without a good offensive line. So Anton Harrison was here. He has left and right tackle versatility as well. He can play both sides if injury does happen or if you just realize he's a better fit somewhere else. So I think that's just the best value. Again, this tackle class, super thin. You're losing top tier guys. So Anton Harrison definitely seemed like the best player available. Mm -hmm. Washington Commanders. I was I would have loved a corner here, but uh, I don't think there was a guy that really fits Jack Del Rio. So looking at other spots, hey, this is a team that really wants to run the football and run it well, and their guard spots have kind of been a letdown this season. So we're going to see the first guard come off the board in Osiris Torrance, who has been a freaking monster for Florida. Until he went up against Jalen Carter. But <laughs> Jalen Carter, makes you know, sense. that's a lot of people. Yeah, I know. And to be fair, that was probably better. That was probably the best better game versus really Jalen Carter. Yeah. yeah. Um, Jordan Addison just falls into the Chargers' lap. Always does. I, he always I know. Does. I know. I hate taking him for the Chargers because of how often it happens. I feel genuinely bad for Chargers fans because, like, I swear every mock draft, it's Jordan Addison. But you know, he's a damn good player. What can you say? He just falls because. Sometimes teams aren't that excited for a wide receiver. Yeah. But it's a good pick. That's yeah, all I can it say. It's it pick. really is. <laughs> like, it's good, man. All right, New York Giants. There were a couple of fun things I wanted to do, like, oh, AR-15, next Josh Allen for Brian Dayball, or, oh, mm -hmm. Saquon Barkley's a free agent and Bijan's still on the board. Those would have been fun, and I kind of wanted to do those. However... And more practically, like this is a team that probably could use help at receiver. Didn't feel like the value was there. Looked at corner, and I think Devon, uh, Devon, 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 Devon. There we go. Uh, Witherspoon. It, I really think he might end up being a first round corner. Uh, I think he's gonna have a banger senior bowl, and he's actually be a good fit for uh, Martindale's defense here. I like it. I like it. Um, so speaking of a team where Wink was from, the Ravens, Jackson Smith and Jigba just feels like the right guy. Bijan was a guy who I considered, but it's like the Ravens are so good at maximizing backs with their value later on. I don't really think you need to necessarily spend this pick on them. Getting a nice, reliable target for Lamar never seems like a bad choice ever. So him, Rashad Bateman, Mark Andrews, you're getting some good, reliable targets and hopefully – Jackson doesn't get injured like Rashad has kind of been a little bit plagued here and there. Yeah. Uh, Denver Broncos, I really want to do the fun pick with Bijan. Because, <laughs> uh, like, think about it. Javante Williams, uh, like, he has a similar injury to J.K. Dobbins. He's probably out till mid-November next year. So that's unfortunate. But 
uh, went ahead and I just took tackle. Like, Dewan Jones seems like a really good fit here. He is, uh, I always mention, Daniel Falele. This is what everyone wanted Daniel Falele to be as a prospect. <laughs> I think Jones will be talked about as maybe a fringe day one. At the very least, this dude's going to be early day two, I think, which means, hey, I'm willing to take him around the 25 spot. Yeah, you and I are very different on our opinion to Juan Jones. Yeah. What, what kind it's so of, funny. What I'm an Ohio say, State dude? fan. I love my big boys. I know. I'm an Ohio State fan. To be fair, yeah. I mean, I was really low on Daniel Fly lately last year, but like – I'm an Ohio State fan. I'm lower on all of these guys than the consensus. It's so weird. Like, I love Ohio State, just not these players. Yeah. Um, I mean, to be fair, like, I take I take what you say about offensive linemen a bit more serious than I would like <laughs> other people. So yeah, <laughs> uh, it's like, well, well maybe it's crap. Oh crap! I gotta go back and watch. <laughs> I, I know. Got to do the deep dive on Dewan, but Jalen Jones. I mean, corner needs to be more of a priority for the Cowboys and I'm seeing in some of these mock drafts. Uh, Jalen Jones doesn't exactly have the athleticism required for a monster corner, but then you think Trevon Diggs didn't test out like a super hyper athlete either. Uh, Jalen Jones has been tested, I believe, at 448 speed, which is perfectly fine because his field awareness is insane. So his reaction time is quicker. Therefore, he kind of gets to the same spot at the same time. I think he'll be perfectly fine. The only issue with him is he's kind of boring to watch because people don't throw his way, usually for a reason, because he's usually doing a damn good job. So um, he's my number seven player in the class. I love him to death. That's why him at 26 is a good pick. Oh, yeah. Speaking good picks, I'm going Bijan Robinson here for Texas. Joe Mixon, boring. Get off that contract. Give me B. Jean. This man is a bull that knows how to waltz. He knows how to dance. You want to do the tango? He says, let's tango. That's That would be amazing for the Bengals. <laughs> bull ring. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, so similar to how Jalen Jones is a lot higher on my board than a lot of people's, my next pick for the Chiefs <laughs> oh, is... Me. <laughs> yeah um it's gonna be somebody where i have him a hundred times higher than people like pff and he's my number two player in the class i've fallen in love with him i know that every single person here who has not been in a discord chat with me where i showed exactly why i love isaiah mcguire is gonna think i'm absolutely batshit crazy and you have full right to do so but until you actually fully watch the tape you cannot say this man is cheeks. And I think this guy could be the best player in the class. 6'4", 275. Fits the bag scheme. He was able to make our number, what, 16 player in the draft? Broderick Jones looked like he was getting diced up into Swiss cheese. Just take my word for it. It's going to be a name that you don't understand, that you've never heard of, but it's somebody that you probably will when draft time comes around. All I'm right. putting my name on it. <laughs> That's my man right there. That's your boy. That's, that's, that's well, my guy, dude. I could appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, the Minnesota Vikings, uh, just based on how the board's fallen, I th- and I just love this pick to the Vikings going Clark Phillips. Mm-hmm. This guy has two pick sixes on the year. Uh, he's perfect for this coverage scheme. He's not a guy you really want in press, so it's great. He could play off coverage, could play in a zone-heavy scheme. Give me Clark Phillips the third. That account. Yes. <laughs> I love Clark Phillips. Um, it's good. So Antonio Johnson is next on mine on my big priority list, and he's literally perfect for the Bills. Uh, he's one of my next top guys. The Bills, obviously, safety is a major concern for this offseason, and you get a super like diverse Swiss Army knife in Antonio Johnson. There's just nothing better. Mm-hmm. Now, the Philadelphia Eagles. This is the final pick of the first round. Houston doesn't have the last pick of the first round. That's actually the start of the second round. Let me just mm-hmm. clarify that. Uh, yeah. However, with this pick, it's like, oh, man, the, the, the defensive interiors here are like, uh, they're mad. The edge talent is immense, and I, I kind of mm-hmm. that's kind of where I want to go. So I'm going to go with Isaiah Foskey. He's a plus run defender. He's got ideal length, and he's a guy that I think could consistently free it up for uh, Hassan Reddick, not Haskins. There we go. I thought you were about to sneeze. 
<laughs> it's like, I was like, bless you. Um, starting off the second round, so there's a lot of people who are considering taking Michael Meyer to the Texans at number 12. Not going to do that, but I'll do it 20 picks later. Uh, he's a very, he's a super reliable weapon, really good blocker. I think he's extremely overrated personally, but at 32, it's totally worth taking a shot on him. He's a really reliable target. Yeah, I like him. Super reliable, great run to uh, blocker. Um, yeah, here he is. Just falls. <laughs> <laughs> Pittsburgh Steelers, after being talked out of a pick uh, mm. <laughs> by mm. somebody, uh, I'm going to go with Emmanuel Forbes. Uh, I just got done talking about the two pick sixes that uh, Mr. Clark Phillips had this season. Let's talk about the six that... <laughs> Freaking Emmanuel Forbes has for his career. Fun yeah. fact, uh, Steelers, cornerback position, kind of dog water. And your best corner, Cam yeah, Sutton, corner. going to free agency currently. So let's help remedy that. Just a little bit. Um, Just a little bit. Yeah, no, I definitely was the person to say, do not get a man that you can find at a 7-Eleven in Siaki Ika for number 33. I, so I, I was I was ready too. I was pulling the trigger. I know you were pulling the trigger. I I was like, but yeah. hey, hey, you're the Steelers fan. I'm willing to give you the benefit of the doubt. We need run defense, but we can pick up a, a big dude who won't do much later on. Blake Freeland is a monster. He's yeah. super reliable. And the last thing the Rams have are reliable monsters for offensive tackle. So I think it's pretty fair to say that being able to address offensive line for a team that won a Super Bowl with a Hall of Fame left tackle, not really a bad idea. So uh, definitely going to be going with Blake Freeland for 34. I do love me, Blake Blake Freeland. There we go. Yeah. Uh, I, like I've said, dude, he's been – he's like the a Abraham Lucas for me in this class. Mm -hmm. All right. Arizona Cardinals. Uh, I'm actually going to go with – tackle myself in darnell Wright. he is a big 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 boy but he moves surprisingly well for it being a big <laughs> big big a boy and this team probably will need someone there at the right tackle position given that uh well my boy josh jones probably probably ends up better guard but uh also kelvin oh, beachum's like what did i say what I said Josh Jones, right? No, I know. I said I love Josh Jones. Oh, I thought you, I just heard Josh Jones. I was like, what are you correcting me? I'm pretty <laughs> sure that's his name. Yeah. Uh, but Kelvin Beachum, he's old. He's old. He's like fine, but he's old. So, yeah, we're going to go ahead and get Darnell right here. Um. So, Ew. a lot of people are probably like in the comments, why didn't you draft Anthony Richardson the first? Why didn't you draft him to Seattle with their 15th pick? Meh. Who cares? You got him at 36. <laughs> so um, we don't know if the real answer is Geno Smith. You want to give him another year. Anthony Richardson's going to take a couple to be ready anyway. So, you know, it's a way of really just testing the water. The Drew Lock truthers, please just stop. There's just there's stop. Drew Lock truthers out there? There are. They're hunting me down. I tried to get Anthony Richardson for the Seahawks another time. They were hunting me down. And like, I, I mean, it's... I digress. It's okay. So for the Drew Lock truthers, relax. I'm not He's lie. not like, going to be. We're, we're not going to have like another cool Gina person. story arc, huh? <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Drew Lock seems like a pretty cool person. He does. He does. <laughs> but cool people aren't always good quarterbacks. So in Bats. this case, Anthony Richardson provides a really, really high ceiling, and you have someone in the meantime who can play at a fairly high level, hopefully. And Geno Smith. Mm -hmm. Well, the Colts, you know what? I like Bernhard Ryman. I think he could develop into a very nice tackle for the squad. So I'm looking at that Will Freeze position. I'm looking at that crap guard position. And I'm like, you know what? I got I got the man for you. Da -da 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 I don't know how the Halloween um freaking Batman jingle. Oh, it might be Batman, but I was yeah, trying to do the little, was being... I was trying to do the Michael Meyer. Oh, Michael Meyer. Oh. I'm Thinking the wrong movie too. Yeah, no, I'm screw like, it. I, I got a man on the interior who's a serial killer. This man is very good. I was very high on him. Honestly, could have been a day two pick in the 2022 class. Decided to return, yes. and um, 
well, not win the Pac-12, uh, but I digress. <laughs> uh, Voorhees, honestly, has the capability to play tackle, I think, in the NFL if you need him to, if you want him to, if Brian um, or um, Ryman doesn't end up working out. You could probably mm-hmm. give Voorhees a shot regardless. I think he's been a really good guard. Yeah. I don't even, I think he was injured for um, for that game, too. I'm pretty sure I didn't see him out there. Yeah, no, but yeah, he didn't play. That sucks. But number 38 for the Panthers, um, you didn't you didn't accept two firsts in the second round pick for Brian Burns. It's pretty obvious edge rusher, pretty high value to you. And again, this team doesn't really need much. You make good value out of your running backs. Don't need to spend a super high pick on one. You have a good offensive line. You have good enough weapons. We'll see if we get one later. And I honestly think the best value here is the edge class. So why not just load yourself up with another superstar edge rusher and BJ Ojolari? You're able to make Brian Burns into a stud. I think you can do the exact same with BJ Ojolari. Amen, brother. Well, speaking of the defensive line, the Saints Mm -hmm. pass rush has been pretty lackluster. Cameron uh, Jordan, I believe, is having his worst season since his rookie year. But I imagine he, he better days are ahead. He is a very savvy vet and a cool dude altogether. Uh, Marcus sure. Davenport is a free agent. Patrick Turner mm-hmm. really hasn't established uh, much of a role or a reason why you should give him more volume. So here, I'm going to go with a bit of a freak in. Once I can find you, Keon White. <laughs> this man's 286. Stupid mm-hmm. power rusher. Let's go with him here. I think he's going to have a really good senior bowl as well. Dude, Keon White's really good. Um, Garrett Williams is someone who I had top 15 on my board. Really, really good. So there's one play that I watched of his where there was actually a double move. It was an out, it was an out up. And Garrett Williams was with it stride for stride. He sensed the double move. And ever since then, I started watching more plays of his, and he looked incredible towards ACL. But there's been some guys who've been making some plays there for Atlanta. So there's not a necessity to bring a corner two into the equation just yet. But I know damn well this is a long-term investment, and this player has the talent that is requisite to be able to make up for what is lost with his ACL. Jacksonville Jaguars. Fun fact, Evan Ingram only on a one-year deal. I know he's kind of popped off, but do they bring him back? And if they don't, I got the man for you. I love me some Dalton Kincaid for Utah, dude. He is really, really, he, 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 he broke out in 2021, and then he emerged in that first USC game where he had over 200 yards. The dude was a monster. They had over 200 again <laughs> against USC. Did he's, he really? he's, yeah, he's oh literally their kryptonite, dude. Literally their kryptonite. Um, for the Browns, getting a consistent pass rush that's not like $10 million a year might be quite nice. <laughs> so uh, Felix and DK Uzama is excellent value. I have number 14 on my big board. Somebody who's really nice in the run, really nice versus the pass. He's also improved his athleticism over the year. So... I always give credit where credit's due. This guy is an absolute stud. Just fell because the position is absolutely loaded. All right. Pittsburgh Steelers. Me having them again. Well, we're going to get him a linebacker. Devin Bush is a free agent. So we're going to go with Drew Sanders here. Kind of a freak. Uh, He's going to test out exceptionally well. Yeah, missed tackles are a thing with him, but... I think it's A-OK. This guy's got the length of clock passing lanes. And I think if you use him in like use him like you didn't use Devin Bush, like blitz this guy. Like mm-hmm. Blitzburg, right? Yep. Blitzburg, baby. Blitz with so. Drew Sanders, dude. This guy is mm, mm. good. Just needs a, ta- a tackle. I mean, it's to be fair, this guy didn't play off like he hasn't played off uh ball linebacker since high school, so. It happens. It happens. Well, he played off ball this year. So yeah, he did. No, yeah. he, he, uh, he was he was coming off the edge for Alabama. Yeah, and he was two fifty. So at least you know he can build on his frame. My it's, gosh, right? Yeah. So that's quite nice. Um. So so far, what's happened with the Packers is the big thing that has been a nice addition to the receiving core is speed. Christian Watson can just like catch the ball and absolutely blow by everybody. So why not pull the Matt Rule route and get 
more speed. And that's Jalen Hyatt. Jalen Hyatt, he's my number 30 player in the class. He is really, really awesome, especially in that role. So definitely think that if you continue having the balls to throw it deep or just allow the guys to be able to get open in space, you're going to have a lot more success than trying to dink and dunk to people who are not necessarily as dangerous with their feet. All right. The almost said Oakland, Las Vegas Raiders. <laughs> Uh, Josh Jacobs is a free agent, and he meant so much to this offense this past season. And I'm going to go with the guy. I'm hoping he's still able to test out. I don't know what the return is for his uh, knee surgery, but I'm going to go with Blake Corum. I'm a huge fan of Blake Corum, man. This guy has got lightning speed, but I also love the contact balance with that nice low center of gravity. Nice. So we just found out about this three hours before recording this, but (laughs) Andre Carter is not required to go to to the military. They allowed him to defer his service, which is awesome. Therefore, Bill Belichick, even though I think his dad was part of the Navy, if I'm not mistaken, he's going to just blow past that. He's going to support the armed forces. He's going to go. (laughs) Yeah, the 6'7", 260-pound freak of nature who needs somebody like Bill Belichick to mold him into a superstar. This is exactly the value I'd be looking for. When Bill Belichick, you're like, oh, what, this guy's out of army? Sorry, army. no. <laughs> yeah. I only want semen here. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> Pardon me. Uh, all right. Guys, <laughs> New buzz. York football jets. Uh, so, uh, considered maybe tackle. I really think they're going to move Elijah Vera Tucker out to tackle. Maybe they like Max Mitchell. And they move Elijah Bear Tucker uh, to left tackle. And then, I mean, uh, you still got Mekhi Becton. So I was looking at the interior. I think they're going to stick with Nate Herbig. Uh, Lincoln Tomlinson, with his contract, you got to stick with him. Connor McGovern is a free agent, though. And I'm going to go ahead and get a guy who is ready to start now in the NFL. And John Michael Schmitz. Honestly, another guy that probably could have gone day two in the 2022 draft. Yeah, I like John Michael Schmitz. Me too. So... The Lions need a linebacker. That's the truth. Y'all have been pretty good when you when it comes to sniping a guy later on. Uh, Rodriguez has been a big hit. But, I mean, the cool part of the NFL is that you get to see a lot of like families start coming together. You got the Watt brothers. You got the Hayward brothers for us Steelers fans. But what about the Sewell brothers? Noah Sewell's on the board. I think he's heavily underrated. He's 250 pounds. Honestly, he moves super well for that size. And you already know that it's going to pretty much be an upgrade over what you have. So I love Noah Sewell. I do think that he deserves the respect of being drafted around this range. He's going to be a big upgrade, especially if he hits. And it's, again, now you have brother versus brother, uh, which is pretty cool. All right. Well, Seattle, they have a very squishy middle of the defense. So I'm like, let's get some meat up in there. Despite what Alex thinks, I'm a big fan of Siaki Ika. I think he he brings that that presence to push the pocket. Uh, that's special for a guy his size. Because you know what? You say he's slow. I say he's 350. Of course he's slow. <laughs> But at the doesn't have to be at the very least he's going to be this big space eater that they really don't have right now. Seven Eleven parking lot, you can find a lot of those. Mainly so, on the east coast, not so much out uh, out on the west coast. That's fair. That's fair. Or maybe it's just um, Arizona. I don't know. I think it's Arizona, but got EGs. <laughs> but like Gronk was the last time a superior freak of nature played the tight end position for uh, the Buccaneers. And obviously those guys are big friends of the quarterbacks who like to use them as a bailout weapon. Darnell Washington is getting day one hype. And I don't think it's out of the question that he goes in the first round, but he's damn well worth taking here in the second. He's an addition as pretty much an offensive lineman. And he's also a freak for his size. So I don't think there's any issue with getting somebody who's going to be a very reliable target to whoever is throwing them the ball. Boom. All right. Tennessee Titans. You know what? They lack separation at the receiver position. Josh Downs, problem solved. I love this dude's stop-start ability. I I said before the the video that Josh Downs is kind of like this value brand Jahan Dotson because obviously Jahan Mm -hmm. Dotson was – 
beast. Mama mia. But my man, Josh Downs, I don't think is on that level necessarily, but here in this like early to mid second round mix, I love it. I love it. And he proved he could play on the outside this year, which I was very impressed with. Very. Um, Washington, I kind of want to get a little bit more consistency. Somehow your defense is so god tier on paper, but maybe just can't pull it together. That defensive so, line that's god tier on paper. That's fair. But why don't let's just make the majority of the whole defense god tier on paper? Jack Campbell is super consistent. He's a great leader. He's somebody who also improved his improved his athleticism over the entire year. So I love giving credit where credit's due. Just like Felix Anjiki Uzama, Jack Campbell also deserves a lot of respect. So I definitely want to bring him onto a squad with Cole Holcomb as well as Jimmy Davis and just absolutely have a stacked linebacking core. So first and second level have dudes of extreme talent. All right. My Miami Dolphins thins up a baby. Fun fact, offensive line ain't so hot outside of guys like Robert Hunt, uh, Armstead, when healthy, uh, and Connor Williams, like uh, other spots, uh, right tackle, left guard, it ain't so hot. So I'm looking to improve that. I'm going with North Dakota State's Cody Mach? Mock. Mach. God only knows. Oh, Cody. Out eventually. Uh, Just Cody. Yeah, right. Better than ex- you would expect athlete that honestly might end up being a guard in the NFL, but with his movement skills i think he could at least give it a go at tackle so yeah yeah um the chargers the defensive line help mozzie smith is the number one guy in bruce feldman's freaks list don't really think there's much more to need to discuss about that he's a good player he's just a freak boy. athlete yeah big boy big boy all right we got the new york football giants this time and uh, mm. let's get y'all some receiving help uh Rasheed smith i'm actually a big fan of i like him in this like 50 range so uh yeah we're gonna go ahead and snag that uh receiver to play on the outside because we know wandale is may- at least it looks like they really want to use him in the slot yeah raw was my first interview of the show so it's kind of cool hey i met him because he had red jordans on i thought they looked cool that's the only reason i ever met raw but ah. Pony up, baby. Um, Bears, I still think wide receiver is a position that we should probably address. Used one of our second round picks for it. Still think you should use another one. Chase Claypool is a nice boundary weapon, but I don't think that he's the end-all be-all. Justin Shorter, I watched AR-15 on All-22 last night. It's pretty obvious how much the offensive coordinator for Florida wants to get the ball to Justin Shorter because they know what he can do with it. And he's a damn good route runner. He's overcome injuries, size concerns, everything. There's, I genuinely believe this guy's going to be a stud at the next level. So why not just buy buy low and then um, realize that he should have been a first-round pick, kind of like George Pickens was. Shoot, there you go. All there right, go. Dallas Cowboys. Tony Pollard is a free agent. Can they afford to bring him back? Because I think he's going to be asking for quite a bit of money. And unfortunately, you're already paying a bad contract for a running back in Zeke. So we're going to grab Jameer Gibbs. He gives you a similar, uh, at least upside when it comes to what he can do out in space once he uh, sees daylight. I like Gibbs. I like yeah. him. He's good. Uh, Hayden Hurst has been a really nice addition for the Bengals. He has. Maybe, yeah, maybe you just don't want to pay him. And you might want to get younger and better with someone who's very similar. And that's Luke Musgrave. I think he's better than any tight end from last year's class. He is maybe scheme specific because he's not a very good blocker, but he's a damn good receiver and he has breakaway speed. I would not be surprised if he ran four or five flat. He is incredibly flat, incredibly fast. Yeah, only got to see two games from this season uh, because of injury, but he'll be at the senior bowl, so. He's a beast. Something to watch. All right, right. Carolina Panthers. Uh, We're not done. We're not done with pass rush. You got BJ Ojolari. I'm saying, yo, Nolan Smith is exceptional value here. You could use him in a Hassan Reddick type of uh, way as kind of like this off-ball slash rush linebacker so we're gonna grab uh, nolan smith who honestly athletic freak the production was better this year torn peck i think is gonna cost him probably being a late first rounder but uh yeah just grab good players panthers i love nolan smith guys he's, a beast he's good uh lions i'm helping y'all out again <laughs> right guard hell type 
we all know it's been a little bit of a busted contract. <laughs> so why not get somebody who's super consistent? You don't have to worry about him at all. Uh, he's going to be obviously on like a four-year contract. Luke Whippler from Ohio State literally is the definition of consistency. You just don't have to worry that much about him when he's on the field. So I just like the fact that I can plug and play him and just kind of forget. Not going to make one of those like crazy highlight reel plays, but he's just not going to let up a bunch of BS pressure. So having him there, and then if Frank Ragnow gets injured, obviously he has experience at center. All right. So the Chiefs have struggled finding a guy that can be competent next to Chris Jones there on the interior. You've already addressed the edge position, and I'm here to address that interior with Gervin Dexter. Good value here at this point in the draft, and uh, I can't wait to look at more of his tape because of question oh. marks. <laughs> yeah, question marks because of what I've been saying. Yeah, Gervon um, has kind of taken a step back in the latter half of the year, unfortunately. But number 62 um cole beasley was just brought back to the team and i think somebody who is truly special going under the radar for the majority of people is zay flowers oh, that's he because is a reason he's not yeah, tall he's enough re- to be on the radar that is very fair <laughs> but he's the reason i don't i didn't like andrew booth last year he carved him up just like um isaiah mcguire did to broderick jones just made him look a little bit more mortal than what some people were saying so uh, Zay Flowers has proved it against top tier talent. To me, that's warranting enough to be at least willing of this pick. All right, all right, all right, all right. Philadelphia Eagles. Miles Sanders is a free agent after the season. Don't pay running backs, just draft new ones. Sean Tucker, pretty darn good north south runner. We're taking them here for the Eagles. The Eagles. Um, okay, so again, not the end of the second round, but the beginning of the third round. Wow, pass yes. rush. Good call. Yeah, <laughs> pass rush still a concern for the Texans. Derek Hall is just a veteran presence. He's really good at just racking up pressures. Maybe not the most splashy player in the world, but definitely someone who's a good locker room presence. I haven't heard anything bad about him, and he's just going to be super consistent. Very good size. Just a guy you just know is going to produce. All right, we got the. Bears, the Bears, and uh, Matt Eberflus. He's a defensive guy. I think he is going to probably target defensive line heavily in this draft. And a guy like Zach Harrison, who probably will test out like you want to draft him in the first round, it's just the production's kind of been all over the place this year. We saw a bit more consistency with him. He kind of understands what he wants to be. So we're going to go ahead and grab him here. You got Jalen Carter on that line now too, along with, uh, what is it, Travis uh, Gibson. So mm-hmm. uh, there's some promise there now. Absolutely. Um, so with the Cardinals, corner was definitely a concern at the beginning, but – you know, we went BPA, we as in you. But yeah, I did. <laughs> went, went BPA, and cornerback's still on the table. And someone who I think my comp for him is Patrick Peterson. I'm a much bigger fan on Tyreek Stevenson than most people, but he has a six foot, 212 pound frame. He's another one of those guys who's really aggressive and honestly really good in man coverage. So I am a huge fan of him. All right, I'm going to make a side note here. Uh, We're acting like Eli Ricks is probably returning. I think this is the only guy we did it for. Uh, And also, you'll probably see – where is he? Oh, he's with D-Line. Pretty sure Lucas Van Ness is returning as well. So, I mean, he said this back in November that, oh, I'm not even thinking of the NFL. It's like, okay, that's fair. (laughs) All right, we got the Denver Broncos. And I'm going to the linebacker position for them. And I'm looking at, where are you at? Cedric Gray. He's kind of quietly had a really good season. We talked about ja- uh, Jack Campbell earlier being just a very good linebacker. And that's kind of what Gray is. He's one of the best run stuffers in this class. And I think he is a plus athlete in coverage. So I'm going to go ahead and take him here for the Broncos. I like it. Um, the Rams, I honestly think they still need help pretty much everywhere. They're pretty much a they're a star dominated team. There's not much um, there's not much depth in terms of their talent. I feel like it's very top heavy. You have your say superstars. star dominated. You literally mean that single, not plural. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Tommy Eichenberg is a guy who goes under the radar. He's a super consistent linebacker, very similar to Pete Werner in my eyes. I really like him. He makes a lot of splash plays, so 
I think that he's just going to be a consistent dude who just brings the heat for Los Angeles. One of those underrated guys. Well, he's better than his brother. I'm not throwing <laughs> yeah. shade out there, but I try to tell Dolphins fans I want to took taking Liam Meikenberg. But what do I know? Uh, Denver Broncos. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to go safety here. Kareem Jackson is a bit older. Um, mm-hmm. uh, who is it? Caden Stearns. He's a bit niche. Uh, I think he's a good like uh, third safety to have and have him basically be on the field for situational things. So I'm going to go with Chris Smith. Man, had a really good year there for the Georgia mm-hmm. Bulldogs. Um, Saints, it's not a really uh, not really a surprise. You needed some help at QB. Somehow Tanner McKee's here. Hey, so I mean, it's, might as well bring him in. He could just be like a. Um, he's gonna be probably similar to Andy Dalton. <laughs> you know what's funny, man? I, <laughs> no, what he's a, he's gonna be a better pass. I think he could be a better passer than Andy Dalton. But they like when it comes to athletically, they might be very mm-hmm. similar. <laughs> Yeah. Uh the uh, Atlanta Falcons hasn't got that edge rusher I re- that I really think they need next to Arnold Ebiketti and uh, you know what we're just going to go ahead and get it now I believe he's with D-line here. Yes, Will McDonald had a farm E I E I O. So we're going to get the speedster in Will McDonald. I like it. Um, Patriots getting a reliable receiver never is a bad thing. Xavier Hutchinson is still worth, he's still one of my top 32 players. Uh, I've just been on that train for a while. Somebody you just can get a hundred targets to and be very comfortable at the fact that apart from when he's wide open at the end of a Texas game, we'll catch the ball. So I think it's super clutch, very underrated. Just somebody who can just add a little bit more consistency to a wide receiver room. All right, we have the Houston Texans, and uh, we were discussing this, that the center position sucks for the Houston Texans. Uh, Justin Brick got hurt earlier in the year, and I believe it's Scott Quisenberry that's been playing so. there, something like that. I don't know, regardless, it hasn't been good. And we're going to yeah. go with uh, my boy that I loved coming out of Virginia. I was so happy that he transferred so he could get a little the shine dude. on his name. Yeah, Olu. Oluwata Timmy. I'm pretty sure yeah. I probably said that wrong because, uh, I mean, I said it fast because I knew I wasn't going to say it with confidence. <laughs> but uh, Dude, I like that, Yeah, this is a team that really wants to run the football. I mean, mm-hmm. if I had Damian Pierce, I would too. So I like it. Uh, Steelers, I wanted to get some help on the interior. I know that run stuffing should be a priority, but at least getting some help in pass rush, not a bad idea. So, Tyler Davis, I'm a huge fan of him. He has more pressures on less um, pass rushing snaps than Brian Breezy. So I certainly think that he should be the man. All right, with the Green Bay Packers, Adrian Amos is a free agent. So why not get a value brand Jawan Brisker in Jair Brown, his former teammate? I actually had a really good year this past season. Mm Mm-hmm. And I believe he is another senior bowl guy. So good chance to see him, right? Yeah, he, he's a good player. I like him a lot. Um, Raiders defensive line always it's going to be probably a need on the interior. It always has been. No, no matter how many guys you try to put there, I don't feel like it's been solved ever. And um, there's an amazing player who's not getting enough recognition right now. And that's Carl Brooks out of Bowling Green. This man could put up a 15 pressure game just out of the blue. And um, he's an elite hand fighter. He's really good at block shedding. And he just doesn't really get, there's not enough tape of him against higher level talent, but he's able to absolutely dominate lower level talent. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter like how, it doesn't matter the talent you go against. If you dominate them, that's the best you can do. So, you know, given the tape that's out there, he did as well as he could. And he's absolutely dominant. And he's over 300, he's about 300 pounds. So definitely somebody that you can kick to the inside. Yeah, it's like what two ninety five, three hundred. Yeah, some he's listed as that. He looks a little smaller than that, but not much. Yeah, but, yeah, moves really well at that size. The Jacksonville Jaguars, their corner position probably can use a little help. Tyson Campbell, he's looking across from him. He's like, "Yo, I need something that's not Griffin, because Griffin ain't cutting it." So going back to one of the Senior Bowl invites, a guy that I actually covered earlier this week that I really like 
in Virginia's Anthony Johnson. This dude's got length. He's got good straight line speed. Had a very productive year there for the Cavaliers. I like it. Uh, number 77, Jets. Linebackers, always been a need. Going to continue being a need. You guys are really good at getting veterans to be able to at least play at a high enough level. But why not get the guy who just got the Bednarik Award, uh, Ivan Pace Jr. He's playing very well, has been most of his career. So, you know, give some respect where respect is due. Ivan Pace is the dude. Throw some respect on my name, please. Do it. Ooh, the Detroit Lions. So, uh, they seem to submit a Lee mm -hmm. McNeil there as a nose tackle, which is great. He's been playing great this year from that position. So, Maybe trying to get it like a penetrator, like that three tech area could mm. be ideal. And I'm a big fan of Toy uh Tully, Toy Peloto. I was a big fan of his brother. But uh yeah, Toy Peloto, man. The dude yeah. dude flies off the snap, man. Six swim Tuli. move. Yeah, I like Tully. Uh next, Seattle, Travis Homer is somebody who like he's had a good enough impact on this roster you've seen in the limited time that he's played he's made an impact and at this moment one i don't want to pay travis homer if you ever have to but also just the best player available because this team doesn't need that many pieces is to go devon a chain 424 tested speed absolute track athlete and again you've seen that type of mold of player be able to, for, to perform at a very high level even in a small sample size he put up what, like 230 yards versus LSU in his bowl game or in his championship game. Yeah, that's, that's phenomenal. 16, Great job. 17 force missed tackles too. My gosh. He dude. he's taken steps up every single week. And again, he's somebody who I have in my top 40. I really do like Devon Aging. So uh him at 80, damn good value. Very nice, very nice. My Miami Dolphins fins up, baby. Uh listen. Offensive line is one of my biggest concerns for the Dolphins. Just trying to get that straight because it's so important to a Mike McDaniel offense. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna swing there again with. I think he's Quebec's own Matthew Bergeron or Bergeron. Still figuring out how to say it. Uh, it's okay. That way, you know, you got Cody. Speaking of names, I can't say it was a moat. Cody Mock. 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 Uh, <laughs> one of the be Cody nice if one of those guys end up playing uh competing for the left guard spot. But regardless, I want to get the other tackle spot definitely secure. So taking two swings of the bat at it, hoping to get it right. Nice. Um Tampa Bay getting interior defensive line or just defensive line in general. Never a bad move. You can never go wrong with it. Colby Wooden's on the board. He's been like the partner in crime to Derek Hall all year long. Has a little bit more heft to him, so I definitely like trying to be able to put him in that Will Golston role, which has been very successful over the past couple years. Very nice. Tennessee Titans. I'm feeling like, hey, we need this offense just sucks. Hmm. It sucks. We've Cool. We've dressed offensive tackle. We got a receiver that can separate and create. Now, maybe we should get off some of those contracts that were on Brian Tannehill being one, but the other potentially being Derrick Henry as he's getting older, starting to. The mileage is there. The mileage is there. So I want to hopefully trade Derrick Henry in for the new model in Zach Charbonnet. Now, this might sound ludicrous because Derrick Henry is still playing phenomenal ball. Don't have to let go of him immediately. And I'm just going to say this. Hassan Haskins, he ain't it. He ain't. Okay. I mean, Zach is one of – he was my buddy back in high school, also Oaks Christian alum. So, go Oaks. But it's interesting to think about him being a backup or a successor to Derrick Henry. Because I do think that they have a very similar aggressive run style, hit the hole. But it's weird to think of the Titans without Derrick Henry because that's literally just their pure identity, it's especially been, at this moment. Been their offense for multiple years. Ever. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the Colts, I think that adding a little bit more spark, a little more juice, not a bad thing. You have a new quarterback, and now you can address the receiving position 
Romo Dunze has been a very, very solid stout wide receiver there for Washington. I think adding him into the mix with Alec Pierce as, as well as Michael Pittman, also Oaks alum, go Oaks, would be absolutely phenomenal. So always just add more, the more the merrier. And uh, yeah, Rome's good value right now. Very nice. Very nice. So we got the Los Angeles Chargers previous picks, Jordan Addison, Mozzie Smith, because, you know, you get... You, they squishy up front. They're squishy. Hell yeah. Nazir Adderley is a free agent after this season. So looking at the safety class, honestly, the value is not terrible late day two for it. So I'm going to go with Brandon Joseph, a guy we both like the past couple of years that just hasn't reached that potential that we'd hope, or at least the replication of that 2020 season. Yeah, start from the top now we hear. <laughs> My number five player in last year's class starting out the year ridiculous how far he's come or not come <laughs> so 86 for the dolphins we addressed offensive line multiple times yeah I think now yeah i think gasicki i mean there's v- so many people ranting about him not being able to break a single tackle online you might as well get someone who's a much better blocker who still has some good route running ability and yeah he has some drop issues but he also has probably the worst quarterback in college football sam laporta still my tight end one Still love him, but um, time will tell whether that sticks around. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with offense with the Giants, and I'm gonna address the offensive line, mainly the interior, obviously. But I'm gonna grab he's listed here at tackle, but Cooper Beebe he moved over to left guard and has been just as fantastic as he has been in prior years for the Wildcats. So get a little more talent on that interior line. All right, so for the Ravens, I kind of wanted to do a unique approach here. Again, this is a team that's very well loaded, like fully loaded. And there's not many positions that you really do need to address. And I don't think there's the DB that I'm looking for at this moment, but there's not the linebacker either. So let's look at a nice little combination of the two. JL Skinner, 6'4", 220 pounds, very good movement skills for that size. And he's been a very big impact player there for uh, Boise State. So... He's right now my number 46 player. I think that getting him here is obviously phenomenal value, but the way that you can use him is as a safety, as a linebacker, even as a slot. And I think that versatility is definitely coveted, especially with a very versatile defense under Harbaugh. Very nice, very nice. So Cincinnati Bengals, I'm finally going to address some of the defense here. Uh, Zach Carter hasn't exactly been what they were at least hoping for and you could get a similar player here in mike morris who is just moves very well for a guy that's like 290. so you get a similar player we know that coach lou there loves his uh his i was gonna say front four but his defensive material for the most part especially now with uh dj reader back golly dude he makes such a difference but uh, i'm gonna go with mike morris I dig it. Uh, For the Panthers, I've heard a lot of people saying, don't go quarterback, go Quentin Johnston in the first. I'm not down for that. I think that, honestly, the best thing to do is to go after the position that would give you move the needle the most, and I think that's QB. But at this spot, there's a man who is six foot five, who's been a dominant X receiver there in the AACC, and that's A.T. Perry. So definitely has that nice boundary ability. A little bit thinner, but he has been able to show that he's developed his route running. He's even become a little bit more athletic. So definitely somebody where it's worth taking him and keeping him in the Carolinas. All right. So Dallas Cowboys, they wanted OBJ. They wanted him. Instead, they ended up getting T.Y. Hilton. So obviously they want some type of vertical threat on that offense. And I'm going to do that with Rakim Jarrett. Uh, drop still an issue with this dude, but he has got blazing speed and good size. I like it. Um, like every so, pick. huh? You like every pick after I'm done. I like it. I do I like, like it. it. Listen, man, I'm trying to be positive here. I don't need you I kissing mean, my butt, dude. <laughs> the only thing I didn't like was Cooper BB. I didn't want to like trash him. The dude is similar to Siaki Ika, literally someone you can just pick up at a 7 Eleven, but. You know, well, I'm trying to be a little bit more positive. Here, you just okay? hate trying to spread a little bit. Dude, this is the holiday season. Like we're supposed to spread more love. You're in a damn Santa hat. How can I start roasting you? 
You can. Like that, I'm here to bring Christmas cheer. I know. I mean, you have Gojo in the background. Like, it's, it's just so a good. time it's to gone. be relaxed and be positive. So, Chiefs, it's in the third round. I think getting another dynamic receiver, never a bad choice. So getting someone like Trey Palmer, who has had a kind of a career resurgence, never a bad thing. Because again, I love giving guys credit where credit's due. He has been able to totally work on his craft and has become a very dynamic receiver. I think that just adds a little bit more spark or at least a little bit more depth to your roster. All right. So nice little run on receivers there, but not going mm-hmm. receiver here for the Minnesota Vikings. I do want to keep addressing the defense. Didn't get to see much of Brian Asamoah this year. Uh, I think he's played special teams. I don't know if uh, uh, injuries or anything played anything into uh, the lack of play this year, but uh, obviously they can't be finished at linebacker. So I'm going to go with DeMarvey and Overshow, and actually a very similar uh, linebacker mm-hmm. in terms of length. So you're yeah. going to get nice and long in the middle of the field there. Uh, Eric Kendricks, you know, they eventually are probably going to try to get off his contract. Um, who, who's the other guy? Jordan Hicks. He's really just a mm-hmm. stopgap at there. this point. Yeah, He's there. <laughs> He's vibing. Um, yeah, Brian Osamo is like, what, my linebacker two or three last year? I, I really loved, him. loved him. I loved him. I hope man. he gets more playing time in the future. He deserves it. Uh, 94, the Bills. Uh, we all know running back is a position they do need to go after. So there's a lot of hype on Tank Bigsby. The fact is, if he didn't get the reception that, you know, a lot of us kind of were like thinking because he's regressed since his freshman year. So we thought that he probably wouldn't have gotten as much of the hype that he did. He decided to come out. He could have stayed. He decided like, you know what? I've been told what I'm supposed to be worth. And so I'm coming out. So uh, Tank Bigsby. You know, good for him. If he gets into day two, that's awesome. The Bills are a great spot for it. He's able to lower his shoulder. And I think that he's pretty much a, just a little bit more powerful Devin Singletary, which, I mean, honestly, it's an upgrade. That's true. That's true. All right. Philadelphia Eagles haven't been able to address the defensive interior just yet, but that ends right here. You got Jordan Davis. Let's get someone next to him uh, if they don't bring back Javon Hargrave. They're a team that typically likes having a deep rotation at the uh, de- on the defensive line regardless. So even if they do, I think a player that I really like in former Richmond Spider, now Demon Deacon, Kobe Turner, would be that he is just a good player. I thought his name was Kobe Turner Wood for a second. I was like, oh. Um, so Cardinals defensive line is also still in need of address. Like we got an edge rusher. That's great. But at the end of the day, you still need help on the interior. So someone Rook, here we go. Here we go. Rook or horror. Ho. Don't, don't think that's the exact way to pronounce it. Horror. Yeah. Or hero or horro. Rook. He's a buddy of Miles Murphy. He pops off on tape too. You watch like Tyler Davis. You end up trying to watch Breezy. Uh, Rook definitely pops off and he's a great player. So definitely want to show some love for somebody who could definitely be a nice little steal. And he's at the Senior Bowl, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, that whole, so, cl- that whole entire Clemson yeah, D-line. Outside is. of Miles Murphy and Brian Brazzi, I think it's Tyler Davis, uh, Rook, and uh, KJ. KJ, yeah. Yeah. All right, Washington Commanders finally get into address the corner position here and maybe slightly undersized, but THT is it for me. I think he plays exceptionally well. He's very feisty, uh, very quick. Love the short area quicks on him. So uh, we're going to go with him right here and now. Okay, so quick question to you. Um, Who do you have for what we should what i decided to go for 98 because i remember i clicked way too early uh, when i was deciding you, you decided to bring more crime to cleveland you decided, what is, you decided yes <laughs> yes okay so because i accidentally clicked parker washington and that's when i went oh, on like a rant about his you. speed yeah so he's clicking he's sticking right here but um we're not going after parker we are going to be going after jacoby windman bringing crime to since not Cincinnati to Cleveland. So he had a, a, yeah. So he has some struggles as an edge rusher, but as a pure linebacker, his movement skills are top notch. His 
upside is through the roof. And the fact is, he can be a pass rusher. So he's going to be a nice high-level pass rusher from the linebacker spot rather than just a pure edge. And he definitely has shown the ability to at least play at a high level at linebacker consistently, maybe not. But that's something where you can take a swing on it in the third. So very excited to say that that would be my dude. Mm -hmm. San Francisco 49ers, I'm going back to the trenches Mm because their guard play has been all right this year, but definitely you could upgrade it. So I'm going to go with the big boy, Steve Avila, who can play both guard and center there. I like it. I like that pick a lot. Yeah, I know. Uh, I know. I hear it every time. I know. I really like it. Well, I mean, I've already heard all these picks. So then in my head, I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Makes sense. (laughs) Um, Josh Wiley. He's one of my favorite H-back tight ends in the draft. He's kind of, he graded out as my number two tight end in the draft, but he's just underutilized. It's pretty obvious that he's not going to be drafted nearly as high as I would want him to be. But his talent, I mean, the tight ends, both the tight ends there for Cincinnati, heavily underused. And both of them are extremely talented. Josh Wiley is just one of those dudes. I thought he's going to be a first round pick every single year that he was able to be drafted. So it's unfortunate that he was not able to be able to take that step up. But I don't think that has anything to do with his talent. I saw him in person at SMU. He balled out. He played every single rep that he'd wanted to. He won. And I genuinely think he's going to be a star in the NFL. But you have Bellinger there. It's not necessarily a need. But the fact is, he is a damn good player. All right, San Francisco 49ers. What do the Niners love? They love trench players. They absolutely love them. We already got one on the offensive end. Now we're going to go to the defensive end in Kalijah Kansi. Bit undersized, but boy, this dude has a motor. He explodes off the line. And he has been a consistent playmaker the last two, two and a half seasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, he's been really consistent. And technically not, I mean, it's ending the draft, but that should have been the end of it. Uh, We're deciding to just jump one round or one pick into round four. Uh, The Texans, we thought we might as well end it off. Well, Caillou Blue Kelly deserves a little bit, excuse me, a little bit of love. He's been actually able to lock down some very, very good wide receivers over his time there at Stanford, but he has some slip ups. I think this is a great place for him to learn from someone like Derek Stingley. So definitely think that it's worth the pick. Oh my gosh. What? We did it. We did it. Yeah. Just basking in our glory. Uh, I like it, apparently. Yeah. not. (laughs) I I (laughs) I like it. (laughs) Uh, I I mean, uh, I feel like there's a couple of names I kind of want to mention just real quick that just kind of like missed out, like Cedric Tillman, DJ Turner. I mean, Mm -hmm. it's the NFL draft. Good players fall. That's what happens. It It kind of is what it is. Yeah. So like doesn't mean we don't love those players we just can find good fits for them and whatnot but let us know who you think probably should have crept into the first three rounds but uh alex go ahead shout yourself out my friend well if you guys uh, you're here so you guys like mock draft content if you guys want to watch a little bit of more of it i'm the perfect guy to do that for we both do mock the mock i like to extend it for a round so if you want to randomly sit for another 25 minutes listening to me make a continuation of one feel free to stop by. And of course, if you guys want to do some cool stuff by watching tape studies together with a bunch of people who love football, you guys know where to go. That's my discord. So would love to see you guys there. Very nice. But thanks for watching the video. These take a lot of work and it's always much appreciated, much obliged. Hopefully this brings a little holiday spirit to your Christmas weekend, but that's it for the video. Go ahead, do the YouTube thing as always till next time. You be easy, my friends. Later.